Defend yourself against DDoS attacks by hiding your true IP address with ExpressVPN. And visit my custom link expressvpn.com slash gillymaster in the description to find out how you can get an extra 3 months free. As we all know, Rockstar made some changes to the Kyabrico heist in the Criminal Enterprises DLC. The most notable one is of course the cooldown change, but aside from that, the way that payouts work in tandem with the cooldown mechanics is something that can kind of be difficult to understand. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys exactly how the heist mechanics have changed, taking into account the cooldowns and the payouts accordingly. To offer a short summary of what has changed overall though, Rockstar basically brought the payouts to be a bit more standardized, increasing the payouts if you get a worse primary target while keeping them relatively the same as you go higher up in the target values. While at the same time incentivizing you to do the heist with more than just yourself, and you'll see exactly how they do that when we start getting into the graphs that I've made. So the heist now operates on this 3 in real life day cooldown that is completely separate from the in game day cooldown if you do it solo or with a group, this is completely independent from that. If you wait 72 hours in between doing Kaiparico heists, you will have different primary loot chances than if you are doing them more often than just 72 hours. On the other hand though, your subsequent runs that you do within 72 hours of each other will see your secondary targets have increased value in regards to the primary target that you get, and that is what's shown in this chart here from TezFunds2. I know that sounds really confusing all at once, so we're going to take it one step at a time here, and I have made over 13 separate graphs to do just that. First, let's talk about the primary loot target chances, having different percentages depending on how often you do the Kayaparico heist. If you have not done the Kayaparico heist in 72 hours, your primary loot chances will look something like this. Your chances of getting a pink diamond will be 20%, and your chances of getting the ruby necklace and bear bonds are both 40%, totaling to 100. Notice I didn't mention the tequila here. That is nowhere to be found on this current chart. That's because if you do the heist outside of the 72 hours, if you only start up a Kyabrica heist once every three days, you won't ever get Cincinnato tequila ever again. It has a 0% spawn rate during this period, so you have more of a chance of getting the higher value targets. However, if you make consecutive runs within 72 hours of each other, your primary loot table is going to look something like this. Now you have a massive chance to get tequila at 60%, Ruby Necklace and Bear Bonds are both downgraded to 15%, and Pink Diamond is downgraded to 10% from 20%. So it's still not impossible to get diamonds, you just have to get very lucky. But even though your chances of getting Tequila, which is the worst primary target, are very high, Tequila also gives you the biggest boost to your secondary targets, and this is what serves to even out the pay and encourage cooperative play. So the data in the graphs you're about to see is taken from the higher end value of the secondary targets using hard mode as a base. If you want to picture what normal mode would look like with the same graphs, they would just be a tad bit lower across the board because the primary targets would not be as valuable. But the same trends that you're about to see in these graphs, they're still going to be the same in normal mode. And what I've done is created some comparison charts for each primary target with a full bag of each secondary target to show how the payouts will differ after the 72 hours and within those 72 hours, when you have those buffed secondary targets. Starting off with Cincinnato Tequila here, oh and one more thing I forgot to mention, we'll also be looking at solo versus 4 players as well, and then at the very end we're also going to have solo versus 2 players versus 3 players versus 4 players, so it's going to be lots of info. Cincinnato Tequila will give you the biggest difference in the secondary target's value at 20%, which means that you will see the biggest increase between the payouts here, the gap between the bars will always be the greatest for Cincinnato Tequila. In a real scenario, it's unlikely that you'll get a completely full bag of cash, and highly unlikely that you'll get a full bag of gold solo without some sort of glitching. But these are just so I have a constant variable to work with, because trying to calculate values with mixed secondary targets would just be another headache because there are just so many combinations you can have. And another thing about this graph in particular, it won't actually be possible to get payouts that are shown in the black bars anymore because it's not possible to get tequila if you wait 72 hours, so this is just a straight up increase in total payout if you do get tequila as your primary loot. Moving on to the ruby necklace, you'll see a similar trend that you would with the tequila. The main difference is the bars don't see as much of a difference because with the ruby necklace, you will get a 10% increase in secondary target value instead of a 20% like with the tequila. But even so, it's still a general increase in payouts across the board with the ruby necklace doing the heist within 72 hours. You're going to make more doing it more often actually, not by a massive amount, but the increase is there. For bear bonds, again, it is a very similar trend. This time, the bars have the smallest difference, though, because bear bonds will only give you a 5% increase in the secondary target value. So you'll still get a bigger payday with the buff, but it's going to be very small. We're talking about like a 20,000-ish increase in the final take. And finally, Pink Diamond, the payouts are the same no matter if it's within or after the 72 hours. Pink Diamond gives you no increase to your secondary target value, so the only difference for the Pink Diamond is you have a higher chance to get it after that 72 hour timer. It's also worth noting that the Pink Diamond will still yield the highest take even with all these changes. 
And to show the steady increase in payout tier for each primary target with the Coke secondary target as a constant, you can see in a different perspective what the bar graphs kind of showed. For tequila, there is the biggest increase in pay, and the difference in the lines slowly decreases until you get to the pink diamond where they are the exact same payouts. And the reason the lines slowly get closer and closer together is because the tequila has the biggest boost in secondary targets, and then it slowly gets less and less as you go to the other primary targets. So if you're strictly a solo player, this can actually serve to benefit you. It's actually just a buff for you, because even getting tequila with full buffed up coke as your secondary target, it's gonna net you about as much money as getting the ruby necklace without those buffed secondary targets. But I did mention earlier that this change is more so to incentivize group play, and that's because as a group, those secondary target buffs are amplified. Starting once again with Tequila, this time with the calculated 4 player takes, and again I know it's highly unlikely for all 4 players to be maxed out on cash and gold, but it's simply a constant that I can use. Because you have 4 players grabbing those buff secondary targets, the difference in payout here is much more defined than it was when you were solo. We're talking a $300 to $400,000 increase in payouts between a Tequila Heist for 4 players with full bags before and after this change. And what's awesome is the black bar payout is completely abolished. That's no longer even in the game. It's not possible to get. And that black bar was also the four player take with tequila before the summer update. So it's a pretty good increase. We're going to see the exact same trend here with the ruby necklace. It's the same trend you saw with the solo graph, but just more defined because you have more players grabbing those buff secondary targets. Again, with the bearer bonds, the trend is just an increased payout across the board for within the 72 hours. And with the pink diamond, the payouts are going to be the exact same because there's no active buff on the secondary targets when you get pink diamond. But here's the most interesting thing about this and what really shows the exponential increase in payout for doing the heist with more players. If you run a tequila heist with four players on hard mode and you get all coke or greater, and if my math is correct, which I think it is, your final payout is going to rival that of the pink diamond. You're going to be within 100k of the pink diamond take with four players also grabbing full bags of coke in that heist. And that is just the power of those buffed secondary targets. And now putting all of this data into one graph, this shows basically everything that I've gone over today. Solo versus two players versus three players versus four players within the 72 hours with the buffed secondary targets represented on the dash lines and the regular payouts represented on the solid lines. And it's in this graph where you can see the clear visual of the increase in payouts as you go up in player count while you have the secondary buff active. Just look at the gap differences between the dash and solid lines for each player count. As the player count goes up, the gap gets bigger and bigger, giving you more benefit for doing the heist with more players. And as you go down, you start to see diminishing returns because you can't carry as much buffed loot as a solo player, so the solo graph ends up looking a bit more like the regular non-buffed line, while still offering better pay though, don't get me wrong. And the good news is that the solid line data for tequila where the graph is at its lowest point is not even possible anymore, so you're always going to get more money than that. Anyways, that is going to wrap up the statistical analysis of the Kayaprico payout changes and how they coincide with these 72 hour, I guess somewhat of a cooldown. It's not necessarily like a hard lot cooldown because you can still do the heist, but there's just some changes with it. I know this was a very, very numbers and math intensive video, but I hope I was able to help you guys understand and visualize how this all works now. Basically, as a TLDR for this entire video, the heist payouts are overall increased with exponential gains for doing the heist with more players, even with the worst primary target. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, feel free to leave a like as well as subscribe to my channel for more GT Online content. I want to give a huge shout out to all my channel members for your support. If you'd like to become a member for some exclusive perks, you can either use the join button or the link that's down in the description. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.